Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Episode Terra on our very long running series, the Unported Playlist, where I take a look at some of my favorite unported arcade games of all time, and we're right in the middle of Unported Hall of Fame. And here's the deal, I thought long and hard about my favorite unported arcade game of all time, every single video I have done on this series so far, and time and time again my mind kept coming back to one and one game only, and that is Maison Flash of the Blade. This is my favorite unported arcade game of all time as of the making of this video, but my mind is a fickle fickle thing and I may change it next week but for right now you heard it here Maison Flash the Blade my favorite arcade game that's never gotten a home port of all time and let's jump right in forget to like and subscribe you know what to do if you feel like doing it I just love this game not only do I love the gameplay but I love the style of what this game is doing and I do not find any irony in the fact that I am saying that my favorite game on the Naomi is a game made by Namco because I love Sega but I am not a Sega apologist many other companies can make amazing things and I think Namco drove home for the gold on Maison Flash of the Blade. Now this is a pseudo light gun game but there is no actual light gun. In the arcade you would hold a samurai sword and there would be a ring of sensors around you that would put that positionally in a 3D space. It was basically like the Nintendo Wiimote long before that would exist. Right now I am playing it with a mouse that emulates that 3D space but I have played this in arcades and it is absolutely spectacular and I continue to try to find original controllers from my Naomi setup so I can build a loop and play this at home. That is how much I love it. But outside of the actual technical nature of how the controls work and how intriguing they are, I just love this game for the style it has on screen. This is probably the best looking Naomi game I have ever seen. It does things with the hardware that don't seem like it would be possible. And this gigantic foot here just kicked me with its toe and that is a nightmare in real life for me. But Maison just does everything right. It is long enough to be intriguing, but not too long that it overstays its welcome. The graphics, the enemy designs, the artwork, the soundtrack are all straight 10 out of 10s in my book. And it does something with a control scheme that you didn't really see that often in arcades. Sure, Konami was doing similar things around the same time with Police 911 and Kasurgi, their own game, with a sword. But trust me, Maison Flash the Blade does it 100 times better than Konami ever did if you're talking samurai games. But again, it's just so much fun. But let's talk about the actual core mechanics. Pretty much every enemy, their attack weapon, whether it's claws or a sword or otherwise, is going to have a glow to it. And you need to pay attention to that glow because their attacks are going to come in one of four cardinal directions, north, south, east, or west. You need to block and parry those attacks. Blocking keeps you from taking damage, and the parry puts an effect on the enemy where you're going to get more damage. This is all about timing. In some ways, it's like a rhythm game, except as opposed to playing an instrument or stepping on a DDR pad, you are using a samurai sword to be able to affect that rhythm. It is just incredible. When you're playing it well, when everything's clicking, this game has a feel and a vibe unlike anything I have ever seen. And the vibe part is 100% there. This headless samurai that draws his sword out of his own spinal column and has a face on his chest, spectacular. And you wouldn't expect these dresses to pop up and start fluttering in real time. This game is full of surprises and I absolutely love them. This gigantic wall of meat with that face skin stretched top over it with the mouth and these gigantic millipedes coming up out of the ground. This is Nightmare Fuel personified and it just works so well and as that face fades away and those eyeballs roll across the ground, the graphic designers, the art directors in this game clearly had an absolute blast not only playing around with East Asian lore and mythology but also just the overall art aesthetic of what they were showing and even the boss characters have such a thing going on, this kind of like half cat half skunk really not sure leave me a comment down below it says demon lynx but that's no lynx i've ever seen leave me a comment if you know what animal from mythology this is because one thing i'm not very good at is kind of the lore of asia but a lot of people seem to know a lot about it so do leave me that comment but an incredible boss fight with so much rhythm and so much pacing and i will say one of my favorite parts of this game is that i think the soundtrack is one of the best things on naomi so go ahead and listen to some of the soundtrack and some hilarious voice acting and i'll be right back
I admire your loyalty. But forgetting your own sister wasn't very nice, was it? Come back here! Now is it just me or does that samurai have sort of a Scottish accent going on? I do not know who the voice actor for this is, it's in the credits, but I couldn't find anything about them. But it doesn't fit the game whatsoever, but because of the arcade era this is from, it just adds to the overall experience. And now we just have flying penguins jumping out of a river, trying to attack us with their flippers. Now I'm going to say it right now, this is a game made specifically for me. It has the control scheme and sort of like gun aesthetic I love, it's weird, it's horror based, and it is just quirky. This to me is a perfect arcade game and I'll defend it all day long as such, but I get it, we all have our likes. And going into this goblin cave here, I love that there's projectiles in the air that you need to strike out with that sword. You're not just always slashing, sometimes you're trying to knock those things coming towards you down. I will say, at least via an emulation, sometimes the sword doesn't register what you're trying to hit like there. Now having played this game more than once on an original cabinet, I will say that's not a problem in the game, and that is why I'm trying to find the controls so I can have this at home. And there are some branching paths as well, you'll see there that Goblin was trying to shut down the treasure chest area in his own cave, but we were able to kill him before that happened, so once we actually are able to kill these enemies here, we're going to go into that cave and get different score ups and health ups as well. So you want to be on the lookout for things that don't quite seem normal because a lot of times those are going to be branching paths in the level, but that's great because it does give you a reason to come back and play more than once. And as we jump back into the boat, again, just look at the face on that belly with the mouth opening up and actually having an expression every time it's hit. This game just has detail so often, even the continue screen, it takes a still image of the game and then you slice through as you continue to go back into the game in real time and it is such a seamless effect, it works absolutely incredible. I do not have a single complaint about this game whatsoever, other than the fact that the controls are very hard to find and I've yet to do it. But this to me is just perfection. But leave me a comment down below and tell me what do you feel about the game and what is your perfect arcade game? Because I'd really be curious to hear what everyone loves. Now I'm not going to strike the game for it because I love it so much, but I will say I hate spiders in real life. I hate spiders in video games, especially the big ones that look like they're man size. It is just not for me and it adds to the horror aspect of the game. But sometimes the game's going to give you berserker mode, which is a one hit one kill mode that just gives you a chance to chain up some kills. And honestly, if there was a better place to use it, I couldn't think of it because I want these spiders to get off screen as quickly as possible. I don't like them jumping at me in 2D and the games with VR and spiders. I definitely do not like so I'm glad to be able to slay them all right here and you get that little bonus at the end it just kind of breaks up the action and gives you something different to do and I love that that was basically a dream sequence and the mirror shatters right into the level behind it all of the tricks, graphically and otherwise, in this game are seamless. Namco's developers seem to have a preternatural ability to make the Naomi do things for them that even Sega didn't seem to get that seamless. It's just one of those games where it seems to have everything going for it, including really bad voice acting. But you do get a decent amount of story. It is hokey like an arcade game would, but you are dinner and this spider lady is out to get you. And again, it's just a little bit more spider, nefarious arachnid, and it is not something that I love. This is just it is honestly scary to me i don't like playing it it's not actually scary it's not like i close my eyes but it just makes me think of large spiders and i am just not there for it but you know, leave me another comment down below and tell me what it is you're afraid of in real life because i would be curious because i bet spiders are pretty high up on that list and i am very very glad that we were able to knock her out of her first attack phase but then she comes back up as a full spider with her head dangling underneath her and that is just creepy in all respects but again it's an amazing fight all the parrying all of the blocking all of the enemy she sends through every enemy has its own pattern and you need to learn that pattern to do better in the game repeated playthroughs are going to make you better at this and this is the type of game that i feel like you could one credit clear if you practiced enough on. I got through this with about six credits and honestly haven't played in about a year. If I played this once a week, I'd probably get to the point of being able to beat it without continuing. I don't know, in like a month or two. It would be a fun thing to see and I'd love to see a speedrun of this on a real cabinet, seeing someone actually moving that samurai blade around in real time. 
but again you get a decent amount of cutscenes this almost feels like it could have been a home release now of course it would have had to ship with a peripheral and it makes sense that we didn't get that but i am surprised that maybe by the wii era namco didn't release something like this on the wii because it would have been a perfect game and honestly the wii not being a graphical powerhouse this would have looked perfectly fine on that hardware and i really wish we had gotten it because as of the making of this video it's never been ported and i highly highly doubt that's going to change whatsoever but moving on to the third area here the demon world we're going to be coming into the river sticks and obviously that's something that most people are going to be very well aware of in mythology and it is just another fun area we jump into this boat here and attack the orman maybe he's the ferryman that gets you from the land of the living to the land of the dead but i made you listen to the soundtrack earlier made you it was incredible you can't complain but it was mostly voice acting so go ahead and listen to some actual soundtrack for like 35 45 seconds i'll come back and tell you more about the game I mean, it's just such a great soundtrack, and it's just another part of the sum of the parts that make this game absolutely incredible. Although I do wish that the clanging of the sword was a little bit quieter so we could get a little bit more of that soundtrack. But again, I'm not even sure why I'm so drawn to this game and why I need to find original controllers. In some way, I feel like I'm a glutton for punishment, and the harder a game is to run at home without the original cabinet, the more intrigued by it I seem to be. Because I want a giant plastic sword in my hand, and I want a giant hoop above my head with IR sensors, understanding where that sword is in real time, so I can basically just sit in my living room and play this once every six months and feel like I'm very happy that it is in my collection. But again, as we get to the final boss here, I just love this dead man with a sword drawn straight through his chest. It is such a vibe. Everything about this game is well thought out and it is stylized to the point in which it seems like every single pixel has an intention behind it. And as he floats into the air here, it is just so nice to look at. I love it and I have no complaints about the game. The story is good. The action is good. The art is good. The graphics are good. The only thing bad about this is that it actually actually ends like maybe a little bit earlier than I'd want it to be. I wish I got like maybe a fourth level in here somewhere. But it is just that fun and as we go into the final battle, Lightbringer's Destiny here, it is such an epic battle and this is going to force you to understand everything you've been taught throughout the game. How to block, how to parry, and how to manage that screen space because suddenly he's going to come out with that big sword and it's not going to telegraph as much as to what direction it's coming from all while you're still dealing with these projectiles that are coming towards you. You need to read the screen and you need to understand what is happening. In some ways, this feels like a bullet hell shmup, not in any way, shape, or form in the mechanics, but in the fact that you have to real-time read what's happening quickly and react to it. Now that we're down for the first stage here, again, you just get so much fun cutscene. This definitely feels like it was going to be a home console release because generally in this era, arcade games didn't have this much story. And I have not seen a cabinet for this game in a really long time. So if you know where there is one, let me know because I do hope they're still alive and well out there somewhere so people can enjoy them on real hardware. Because if trying to find the controllers or any indication of rarity, then these cabinets must be pretty damn rare because I can still not find one after having seen it a long time ago. But as we get into the final stage here, the final boss floating around on these, I don't know, rock pyres with faces on them. It is just such a vibe when we have this gigantic eyeball floating in the background. Now, if you have some sort of background or education in sort of the lore of this culture, the game probably even has more to offer for you. But I thought long and hard about all of the episodes of Unported Playlist I've done over three years, and that is how old this series is, and it's still going strong. I've got other like two years worth of games to talk about if I want to continue, and trust me, I do. But this one is the best that I have played. It is so intriguing, it's so different, it's so unique. I just absolutely love it. There was a time and place before the Wii where these sort of arcade cabinet experiences that you cannot play at home were all the rage because graphics were getting very similar 
and arcade cabinets had to offer something the home market couldn't, and in this instance it was a giant motion controller samurai sword. And we launched that sword right into the eye, piercing it through the center, and ooh, if that happened in real life it would be a very, very unhappy eyeball attached to a human head. But that is Maison Flash the Blade. I've got nothing bad to say about this game. It's a 10 out of 10 in my book, and one day I will find the controllers and I will have it in my collection. But leave me a comment down below. Did you know about this game before I talked about it? And are you planning a vacation soon? See you next time. Bye-bye.